Hi everybody, it's meteorologist Joe Chaffee is uh, just playing around with the jet stream going backwards and forwards, um, but it's Friday, it's the end of the week, got a lot going on that I want to talk about and we're going to start with today of course and, and you know once again as we uh, take a look at this upper air pattern here we've got this trough in the uh, east and that has been just non-stop by the way and of course we've got this ridge out in the west so uh, th that is going to continue at least from what I've seen over the next two weeks on the long range uh, there's no reason for me to vary from this uh, in terms of the overall pattern the trend is your friend uh, is usually a good thing to remember when you're forecasting uh, it takes a lot to break a pattern down once you get into it and we seem to be locked into this now uh, that trough lifts out uh, we get another trough that drops down uh, next weekend and then that lifts out and then we get yet another trough that drops down uh, we're into the week of July 18th and that's still there in the east through July 23rd and by the way in case your eye might have not seen this um, two things uh, we don't really see a, a reflection here of tropical depression 4 which we'll get to in a second I mean you can barely find it uh, on some of the models although the UK met model uh, kind of wants to resurrect it early next week uh, but right here is the GFS reflection of another tropical system for later next week uh, and beyond and in fact the European and Canadian models have this in one form or another the European uh, has uh, has a, a, a much an even stronger system than the GFS does uh, a little bit further to the north but the bottom line is that it, it looks like the eastern Atlantic is really going to be the center of attention um, this season based on just what we've seen so far with the uh, Brett and now this tropical depression uh, that the tropical depression four which we'll take a look at and you know what uh, the weather service in their uh, advisory de described it as a ten is tenacious because uh, it seems to be wanting to hold on uh, even though it is relatively weak and, and yeah it is you know it's still there uh, it moves along to the uh, northwest it looks like maybe it's a little more westerly in its motion in the last several hours uh, it's north of 15 degrees north and it's now crossing 50 degrees west uh, but you know it, we still have um, issues with this and the, and the water vapor imagery is going to show this really well there, there are two issues going on with this tropical depression and here you see it there here, here it is right here um, notice that there is this huge right in here this is all dry Saharan dust believe it or not um, dust from the Sahara this does happen comes off and then moves across the Atlantic and you can pick it out on the um, water vapor imagery um, that is on the eastern side so some of this is getting uh, entrained into the circulation of the tropical depression and the other thing that's happened is right up here you have this large upper air storm that goes way up into the atmosphere and that's creating strong southwest or even westerly winds in the upper layers of the atmosphere which is a uh, an environment of uh, moderate to strong wind shear and when the depression moves into that zone which it's going to do shortly it's getting very close um, it's going to have a very hostile environment to fight through now usually what happens is when these systems get sheared apart they do, they seldom come back but every once in a while they do so you you, you can't you can't say unequivocally that um, uh, it, it's once they're sheared they they uh, they don't redevelop every so often you do get a system that gets sheared apart and then once it gets west of 70 degrees west into off the southeast coast of the United States um, it tends to be a bit more favorable for development and indeed just from the standpoint of of uh, the UK met model which the Hurricane Center actually points this out and I'm just going to show you we don't get to see a lot of the of the model itself I want to make sure I have the the right time frame let's go back it's 120 and 96 okay oh I have the European up I'm sorry <laughs> my mistake I switched over uh, I want to just look at the UK met 
but apparently the UK Met model uh, does have this system uh, regenerating in the Bahamas uh, early next week. Now, it, it's the only one that's doing that. The other models kind of show a hint of this, but they uh, don't show much more. Uh, and, and I again, I'm just going to say that you know you have to have something intact uh, in order for something to redevelop. You got to have something, uh, you know, some some core part of the circulation that gets le that gets left over. And many times you just don't have it. The models reflect the system until uh, they lose it, uh, until it's gone, and then and then you don't even see it. So you know we're going to have to leave open that possibility. Um, the GFS doesn't really show too much of it, so we'll just back up. And here's your depression, you know, uh, as as seen by the GFS. And you know, except for the fact that you've got this kink in the isobar and uh, the uh, area of uh, showers, it looks it really is, you know, on the GFS anyway, it looks like an open wave. You can still see its reflection here in the eastern Bahamas uh, when we get to early next week. Uh, all the uh, dynamical all the dyna uh, the uh, the hurricane guidance, the uh, uh, dynamic models, the um, the hurricane models, uh, all have this um, you know moving west northwest. This is the intensity guidance here. Now, oddly enough, some of these models actually strengthen this uh, beyond 48 to 60 hours. I'm not sure why they're looking at that, but the more the, the vast majority of them keep this all under tropical storm strength. And here's the uh, cluster of tracks uh, moving uh, northwestward, uh, north of the islands, and toward the eastern Bahamas by uh, early next week sometime. But again, we don't even know how much of whatever we're going to have left at that point. So uh, the other thing that I want to take a look at is the fact that we do have uh, another system going to be uh, forming out of the tropical Atlantic if the weather models are correct, if the global models are correct. The GFS has been doing this now for several runs. The European, which has not been doing it, has picked up on this as well. Uh, but this is for later next week. Um, again, this is in fantasy land. But you know, one of the takeaways I would I would uh, I get from this is the fact that you know the tropical Atlantic normally does not get active until late July, early August. Uh, and some years it doesn't get active at all. Um, the systems remain weak and never develop. I mean, here we are in the first part of July, and we've already had one tropical storm uh, come out of there. And uh, now we have this tropical depression. So, you know, I'm really thinking, I'm really thinking that this might be um, a, a tropical Atlantic hurricane type of year where you're going to get a lot of these systems developing far out to the east and then making their way westward. So as we get deeper into the hurricane season, um, this is going to have, um, you know, we're going to have um, more of these uh, Cape Verde type storms. Uh, there's going to be some implications with this depending on how far west the tracks are. Uh, no guarantees that the pattern stays that way, by the way. Uh, there have been hurricane seasons where something like this has happened early on, and then you get into mid, early to mid-August, and then the whole pattern changes and everything shuts off. But uh, in the absence of an El Nino, uh, in the absence of a La Nina, or any other outside factor that would impact the amount of uh, storm activity, we seem to be settling into um, a, a period here where the tropical Atlantic is going to be busy. So uh, we're going to leave it at that today is really not too much change in the longer term as far as the weather is concerned around the country um, and it's a Friday it's been a long week uh, I've worked it with a holiday and frankly I'm tired so uh, we'll leave it at that here thank you for joining me on my YouTube channel I am going to be looking into the possibility of doing some live streaming on YouTube um, once I get some time on my hands and I can sit down and play or play around with the software and figure the whole thing out but that's kind of my short-term goal here is to maybe do some live um, some live weather casts here on YouTube so ho hopefully uh, you will be joining me with that uh, when the time comes and uh, let us uh, also um, say thank you to all my YouTube subscribers which have grown nicely in the last uh, month and a half and I really uh, really appreciate that and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, just hit the subscribe button on the channel page and uh, become a member of the pay of the uh, channel and you get notifications when new videos come on. 
and you'll get notifications when I do a live stream. All right, folks, have a great Friday. We'll talk to you soon.